Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Chris Nowoski, and welcome back to another episode of the TKR Podcast. I'm joined by Craig Epstein. Craig, man, it's been a while. We haven't recorded in a couple a couple weeks after, you know, there was, you know, four games have gone by really since we last recorded. So there's lots to unpack with this one. But obviously the main focus of this podcast is talking Rutgers' big win over Indiana last night. Uh, Ron Harper Jr. with the big cojones, uh, making the – you know, the, a three-pointer with two seconds left. Um, Craig, man, just, you know, quickly, just, you know, what are your thoughts from the game last night against Indiana? That was just a that was a crazy game last night. That, ranks, that one honestly ranks right up there, I think, with the uh, – probably the Purdue game from a couple years ago, 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, last year they had the Minnesota game. That that Both games pretty much punched their tickets to the mm-hmm. big, big mm-hmm. end. So unfortunately, they didn't get it in 2020 because we know what happened. Right. But um, this one – I don't know if a punch. I don't know if this. I don't think this punched their ticket, but this definitely puts them, puts them back in the driver's seat because I think this was pretty much. This was kind of a. This kind of felt like a pseudo kind of tournament game where you mm-hmm. had two Absolutely. teams, two teams firmly on the bubble. I mean, it pretty much a lot of projections I saw had, had them either both as the last four in, or I saw DeCourcy had uh, Indiana as the last four in, Rutgers as the first four out. Mm-hmm. So it was just like two teams firmly on the bubble. But basically, the winner of this, like I said, has basically has their destiny in their hands. And Rutgers, thankfully for Rutgers' sake, they got the win. So now I think they're back into the driver's seat. I think after – this is why we said after the – um, we had to kind of – as big as those four game that four-game winning streak was, mm-hmm. the, the, they weren't done. Right. And we could see it. I mean, before last night, I think I don't not I did I don't think Rutgers was a tournament team. Right. I think they were close. I think they're about I think they're right around the bubble. But if the season ended, you know, about twenty what about twenty four hours ago, I would yeah. say Rutgers isn't yeah. a tournament team. But after last night's win, I think this puts them into that final four that final four uh, last four in mm-hmm. spot. I, I think I, I think at least the last four in. I we'll get into probably more about that later, but. And I think this probably probably springs Indiana out of that last that last four spot, and now they're kind of on the outside looking in. And honestly, if you look at the remaining schedules, Rutgers has Penn State on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Penn State, you know, not not having a great season. They they did beat them earlier in the season, but it, I mean, Rutgers at home against Penn State is definitely a winnable game, I think. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, and you look at the Indiana side, and uh, they have to go to Mackey Arena. Mm-hmm. So that's, I mean. They, they. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm thinking Indiana's probably not going to win that one because, as we saw not too long ago, winning at Mackey Arena is just, it's, it's just a bear. I mean, it's yeah, so yeah, they're, yeah. they're so they're so good there. So, if honestly, if Rutgers can close the deal on Sunday, get the win, Indiana loses to Indiana loses to Purdue. I think that I think that does it. I think Rutgers would. At, I think Rutgers would at least be at least punch their ticket to Dayton. But I do think if Rutgers wins on Sunday, I do think they're going to be in the big dance. Yeah. And then um, obviously we'll, we'll talk about it later also. I'm glad you brought all that up though. It's kind, of, <laughs> kind of like a precursor of what we'll talk about later. Um, but uh, going back to last, last night's game, uh, you know, Indiana led by 10 points late in the first half. I think with like 12 seconds left, they went up by 10 first half. Uh, Geo Baker hits a rainbow three-pointer at the buzzer, makes a seven-point game. Um, you know, after after Purdue went up by ten, you know, I mean uh, Indiana, excuse me, uh, mm-hmm. all the fans at uh, Assembly Hall were going nuts, um, and then Geo Baker really quieted the crowd. You know, in a, in a you know couple seconds later, um, you know, I, w- I wouldn't say Rutgers had momentum going into the halftime because you know they were thrown down by seven, but right after the break, um, I know we talked about off camera before we started. They got a couple steals. They went on a run. Um, they eventually took a one point lead at 38, 37, I think it was. Um, and then they kind of traded buckets from there. Both teams went on some runs. Um, and really the last 41 <laughs> seconds are, are, are just like the main story of the game. Um, I, know, I know you had Cliff O'Murray making making a couple foul shots. Um, Indiana missed a couple of layups in the paint. Uh, really, really good defensive efforts by Harper and, uh, and Cliff there. Um, uh, Cliff, uh, and then um, on the second, on, the, on those shots, you know, Cliff grabbed the rebound. He passed it to Baker. Baker threw it all the way up court. I thought I thought Baker should have should have kept the ball there. Yeah, definitely. Um, that was that was a poor decision. That was he a poor def- decision. He and, most and definitely they got, got, and they got and they got lucky too because he threw it up court to Paul. Paul was sprinting, and the ball actually hit the ref. It kind of yeah, went into say, Paul's yeah. hands. And Very then, lucky with that. <laughs> um, obviously, he went into the corner. Um, Xavier Johnson from Indiana fouled him, kind of gave him a little push. 
Paul kind of responded with a little open hand slap, I guess you want to call it. Bayonne left hook there. Bayonne left. <laughs> <laughs> Bay- yeah, Bayonne left hook there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that showed you. Yeah, there's some Jersey toughness for you right there. <laughs> um, but I mean, I don't know. I thought, I thought, I thought it was really Johnson's fault for really, you know. I mean, yeah, Paul, Paul shouldn't have done that, but. Um, at the same time, the game was a little bit chippy earlier. With and I remember Ron Harper Jr. and Rob Finnessy, you know, got into a little bit. Um, so the game, obviously, like you said before, man, like uh, both teams needed the win. So the, a lot of there's a lot of emotions, a lot of you know in, intensity the whole game. So yeah, I think we can probably talk about that a little bit more too. Is that the that little uh, little moment there? Uh, as far as as far as this recording goes, we haven't heard any. I don't think we've heard anything. I don't know if you've heard anything. I haven't heard anything. Mm-hmm. Whether or not he's going to get suspended for a period of time i don't personally i, don't so. I would i would lean towards no because like you said uh i think Xavier Howard Xavier Howard initiated the contact and kind of pushed him with the little near the throat area mm. does not a, absolutely not an excuse for paul to swing like that uh right. he shouldn't be doing that and i do think they made the right call he probably should he probably his day probably should have been done after that mm. but i think that's the length to towards which it should be to end because like because i mean like you said emotions running high something like that happens. I mean, he gets pushed into a group of people. Like it's kind of just a little bit of a natural reaction that you're Mm going to defend yourself. I mean, to me, to me, this wasn't, this wasn't the the Michigan Juwan Howard thing. I don't, (laughs) it was, yeah, I don't think it was that level. I mean, you look at, I mean, look at, you look at, go rewatch. And honestly, going back to Paul, if you rewatch it, it looked, I think it looked, it looked worse in real time than it did in slow motion, Mm -hmm. which is kind of weird because usually it's the other way, it's the other way around, but I watched Mm -hmm. it in slow motion. It didn't look, it didn't look as bad as it did in uh, real time, and Xavier Howard, I think, did a did a little bit of an acting job there. Yeah, I was, yeah, it I was, was a little bit. Kinda, of an he kind of like flew back like twelve, you know, twelve thousand feet. Yeah. So. the Oscars are coming up, so we'll give him, <laughs> we'll give we'll give him the excuse. But it was a little bit of an acting job, not an excuse for him to swing. He shouldn't be doing that. Sure. But uh, but if you look at the Michigan thing, I mean, Diabate was basically throwing haymakers after that game. I mean, and he only got one game, so this wasn't. I don't think this was even close to that level no. of no it's, violence. It's, not, it's not like both guys were like deliberately fighting each other so no i think yeah it's okay. yeah i mean yeah you have to know you can't swing but it, this wasn't he wasn't no. throwing haymakers out there so i think i think i don't i don't see a suspension coming for him i think yeah. he'd be able to play on sunday and yeah. and you know just now it's now it's kind of now this this hopefully for paul is kind of the uh kind of rock bottom for him because We'll probably get into this now. I mean, he hasn't been ever since he had he was great for those couple games, but ever since after that, he hasn't been he really hasn't been the same t- guy since then. I mean, you can see it. He's he keeps looking for fouls. It's it's like he's playing two battles. He's trying to play mm-hmm. the game and he's also trying to battle the refs. And it's just like he he's good. Like he, he like I he needs to know that he's good enough to get his mm-hmm. without going to the free throw line. Like he's talented enough. Mm-hmm. I mean, the look at the Northwestern game. I mean, the guy he scored like 30, 32 points. Was, yeah. yeah, he scored like thirty something points. I don't, I don't remember off the top of it, but I don't think he made that many trips to the free throw line. Mm-hmm. And just the style, and I think the style that he plays isn't going to get him the the calls that he wants. When you look at a guy like a Jaden Ivy, that guy is so fast that everything he does, every time he cuts, even if it's not a foul, it looks like a foul. And we, I mean, we saw it in the Purdue game that Paul doesn't play that style of game. He's not fast like that. He's more mm-hmm. methodical. He's more kind of Swiss Army knife, find your way through the defense, YMCA ball you to death. And you're just not going to get those calls. And the more you complain about it, the less likely you are. Because mm-hmm. now these refs are probably going into games where they know he's going to be looking for fouls. And they're just, this is a pre predetermined thing that they're not going to give him these easy kind of ticky tack fouls but my message to him would be is that he's good enough to he's talented enough to make it to have an impact on the game without going to the free throw line so if he can just get back to the paul that like we knew like mr grit you know finding you know finding the weak spots right. being the conductor for the offense th- this team like we've saw it this team this offense is looks so much different looks so much better when he's on his a game so that's yeah. kind of my little diatribe with that. <laughs> There's the Paul Mulcahy rant from Craig there. Uh, yeah, I mean, so so going going back to the little to the incident. So Xavier Johnson was called for a common foul before before Mulcahy got called for the flagrant foul. 
So obviously McKay he couldn't couldn't shoot the um the foul shots because they were in the bonus. So Andre Hyatt came in and Indiana got to choose who actually took the free throws and they took Hyatt. And credit 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 to Hyatt for making both those free throws. I mean, like I mean, like we were texting yesterday. You know, he doesn't really contribute all 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 too much throughout you know throughout the games uh, for the amount of minutes he plays. But you know, kudos to him for getting those two foul shots. Um, Indiana got the foul shots on the other end from the flagrant foul, so it kind of it kind of you know balanced out there. But um, if you know Rutgers usually you know they're not the best obviously best foul foul shooting team. So if Rutgers had had missed those and Indiana made the two foul shots. It's obviously a different game than, than, than what it was. Um, so then, and then right after that, um, Indiana got the ball again, um, had called time out, I believe. Um, I think they, they made, they shot up a first, free, they were down by three, 63, 60. They, they shot up a three pointer and missed uh, going back to high. The, the rebound went, went right through his hands. Um, Indiana got the ball back. Uh, I think it was a jump ball. I could, could be wrong. Yeah, well, um, yeah, yeah, it was a jump ball. It was a jump yeah. ball. Um, possession, yeah, it was. But, 10, and then yeah. they got possession again. And then they made a three pointer in the corner uh, to tie the game. And then obviously, we know what happened after that. Joe Baker passed the ball up after it inbounds to Harper. He does a little move on Race Thompson, I believe it was. And then he makes a three pointer. Um, really quiet the crowd, obviously. And then he and then he actually tipped the ball on Indiana's ensuing inbound play. So, uh, Indiana, I don't think, I don't think. Uh, at least judging by the stats, it didn't seem like the shot attempt that the buzzer actually counted. So um, the, it sounded like the buzzer went off before before the shot by uh, Jackson Davis. So, mm. um, yeah, I mean, big, big win for Rutgers. A quad one win, quad one road win, no less. Um, this is a game it had to have if it wanted to save its season or, you know, keep keep the dream alive, I guess we can say. Um, I think Harper had, Harper had 19. Cliff and Geo had 13 points. Uh, Cliff also had 12 rebounds and four blocks. He was he was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I know Trey Stacks and Davis had uh, like 15 points in the first half. He was unstoppable. He was like <laughs> just doing every kind of post move in the paint, spinning <laughs> hooks, whatever. Um, you know, like you, I'm sure you want to talk about it too. But Rutgers switched to his zone defense for most of the you know rest of the game, and um, that really helped you know the Rutgers defense and help Rutgers really get back into the game there. Yeah, that was very curious. I mean, like we like we said, Trey Jackson Davis was a monster in that first yeah. half. I mean, he scored, I think, like nine of their first 12 points, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. went to the half 15. And Pike, Pike, well, credit to Pike, will switch to a 2-3 uh, zone, which we've seen him do a couple times this year. I mean, it's not like this is a new thing. Especially I mean, I know that, of late, they've switched exactly. a lot lately. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, I mean, I know they haven't played Indiana. Mm-hmm. This is the first time they've played in all year. But, I mean, there's tape there. There's, you know, there's a history where Pike will switch to a 2-3 zone. So, it didn't didn't exactly catch us by surprise mm-hmm. but it seemed to catch indiana and mike woodson by surprise because i mean it seemed like they just didn't they didn't they didn't counter at all they just mm-hmm. basically kept playing the same style trip but didn't work because Rutgers was able to slow down trace jackson davis and that was pretty much i mean that was that put them in a hole they seemed to not be able to get out of uh, johnson mm-hmm. finished with 13 thompson finished with 12 but that, they, they just you could tell they, they were not the same team in the second half and and I think a big moment going back to uh, was the Geo three, you know, mm-hmm. cuts the lead from ten to seven, and then coming out of the half, I think Rutgers had like three straight steals. So right then and there, you knew like you knew Rutgers. Rutgers, you know, w- whether or not they won the game was le- we'll have to see, but they were definitely gonna they were gonna hang around. Mm-hmm. And if history has shown us anything, it's that if Rutgers mm-hmm. hangs around against Indiana, chances are they're gonna come away with the win because I mean this is now five straight five wins straight, against yeah. Indiana seven of the last eight it's just it's just this is just a crazy uh crazy streak that these guys have gone on against this specific program and it really really all started with uh back in 2018 with Corey sanders uh at the madison square garden Mm -hmm. game they were came back from 16 down uh won the second was they won the second round uh it was big Um, yeah big yeah yeah. second round of the big 10 tournament and that was crazy that was so crazy because that was that was just so crazy because before that Rutgers was just bad. They were just the program was not in good shape. I yeah, mean, that that tournament was really when Rutgers kind of, you know, it kind of it kind of announced itself a little bit. To yeah, to it was. I think yeah, they weren't. I wouldn't say they were on the level of like, oh wow, no. this team could be a right. tournament level team. But it was like, okay, this team is. This is the start of. This is like the first sign of something, mm-hmm. which for which for us was. <laughs> That was just like, I mean, we had nothing. We had like right. basically nothing before mm-hmm. that. It was it was so bad. 
But I mean, that was of Corey Sanders I mean, was a tremendous player. Was like mm-hmm. yeah, just tremendous. I was kind of, and that was like Geo's kind of Geo's kind of coming out. I mean, like, it's crazy to think. Yeah, I was like that, that was man, that was that was Baker's uh you know freshman year, right? Yeah, that was like that, that was, was baby Baker. Was, like it was like wow, Baker, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like wow. It's like look at this guy. It's like exactly. we might actually have something with this guy. And then all these years later, he's like one of the, just crazy to see how far he's come. And Deshaun Freeman too. He was he was he was a uh, he was really good too. So mm-hmm. I mean, it was just you know the first that was like the first sign of something for this program and. To do it against, and at the time, to do it against the Blue Blood, like Indiana, right. I mean, that was just insane. And that was the first time, and then that was like, to get to the quarterfinals of the Big Ten tournament was just like, mm-hmm. for us, it was like, wow. It's like, oh my God, we actually we actually have something to be happy about. And it's just, now all these years later, it's just crazy to see how mm-hmm. far they've come that now beating Indiana is like, just like, it's almost it's like normal at this point. I mean, they've beaten them, <laughs> like I said, five times in a row, seven the last eight. Yeah. Whether it's Archie, whether it's Mike Woodson, don't it doesn't doesn't seem to matter. I guess we'll see what happens now, in the coming years. But just yeah. just crazy to see how far how far they've come. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very it's very crazy to see how well Rutgers has done against Indiana lately. Um, yeah, like you said, obviously Indiana is you know one of the better programs in the country, and uh, they obviously have have lots of talent still on the, on the, on the team even now. And um, yeah, Rutgers has won five straight against them. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really know what, what, what much else to say. I know. Yeah. I mean, if you want to see, I was going to say, if you yeah. want to see how far they've come, just look at, uh, Gio's Twitter, Ron's Twitter. Cause they were quote tweeting. I saw they were quoting some of those articles from, uh, from how many, you know, how many years ago was now before, before that, before that tournament game, okay. at least saying that, you know, recall, recall saying that Rutgers doesn't belong in the big 10, you know, <laughs> that type of stuff. And yeah, kind of having the last laugh with that one. Cause <laughs> Geo now Geo finish Geo more than likely finishes his career seven and two against the Indiana. I don't th- I don't think they're gonna face them again. Mm-hmm. If they do, then it's probably gonna be like the finals of the Big Ten tournament, and <laughs> we, then we don't have to worry about whether or not Rutgers is going dancing because they will be. Sure, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's just just crazy to see Rutgers little little Rutgers having a uh, having a last laugh against a uh, blue blood like Indiana. Sure. Um. Yeah. I mean. Um, I know, I know, we haven't recorded in, in a couple couple weeks here, but um, I, I mean, I guess at this point, it doesn't really make sense to talk about them um, since talking a lot about the Indiana win. So, I guess we can move on to now. Uh, we got we got Senior Day coming up on Sunday against Penn State, uh, twelve o'clock noon at Jersey Mike's Arena. I will be there. Richie will be there, and I think you were going to be there. You said so. You know, we got full full Tiki R allotment there, covering the game, covering all the action. Um, I believe. I believe we're getting uh, interviews with Kayla McConnell, Baker, and uh, Ron Harper Jr. tomorrow, Friday. Um, so we'll have much more on that, uh, you know, regarding Senior Day. Um, you know, those you know, those guys really, you know, all, all, I mean, I also want to mention guys like Montez Mathis, Miles Johnson too. Like, they really helped build the program to what it is today. And, you know, they they deserve a really tremendous, you know, send-off on Sunday from the fans. I mean, I mean, Rutgers was the doormat of the Big Ten, like you mentioned. Um, and you know, all of a sudden they, you know, really kind of sort of made, maybe make the NCAA tournament, you know, three years in a row. And it's, it's, you know, that hasn't been done for, you know, over 30 years, I guess at this point. Right. So, I mean, they made the mm-hmm. tournament last year. They won a game, almost won two, could have won, could have won three. You know, they had Syracuse next after Houston. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, this, this, you know, those, the, those guys especially have really built this program to where it is. And, um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, you know. The Rutgers legends at this point, especially Baker Harper, you know they they you know lit the Rutgers to to new heights. Both made you know incredible shots in their career. You know lit the Rutgers to big wins. You know time time in time out. Um, you know uh, you know Harper Harper hits the three pointer against uh you know half court shot against Purdue earlier this season. Uh, you know obviously if the Baker has you know step back jumper has really just you know won a ton tons of game over his career. Um, obviously Harper hit the shot last night too. And, um, you know, Kelly, Kill McConnell was, is now a semifinalist for the, for the Nate Smith, you know, defensive player of the year award. And, and that's, and that's nationally, um, which means, you know, he's, he's obviously the front runner for the big 10. Yeah. Could you imagine that he lose, can you imagine he does, <laughs> he's yeah. nominated for the national player of the year and like, Watch it and watch him not win Big Ten. Exactly. Like, I, was, I wasn't going to bring it up. I'll be. I was going to be positive here. But <laughs> watch it. Watch him. You know, watch him win national. Watch him win national defender of the of the of the uh, world. 
yeah. of the of the college basketball world and not win the Big Ten. Exactly. <laughs> Defender. Yeah. It, it's, it's like it's like when uh, you know all all credit to Kofi Coburn, he's a great player, but when Paul had that you know in, incredible week a couple weeks ago in February, you know Kofi Coburn got Big Ten Player of the Week and and not even you know was signed from McKay there. You know a, a lot a lot of times you know Rutgers has always been like co co player of the week and. You know, Geo Baker was the Big Ten Player of the Week a week later, and uh, I thought Paul's week was better, obviously. So, mm-hmm. yeah, um, it'll be yeah, co- it'll, eh, he'll give Caleb he'll be co defender of the of the Big exactly. Ten. <laughs> the Big exactly. Ten. It'll be him, him and Trace Jackson Davis. Which Trace yeah. Jackson Davis is tremendous. This guy's gonna be a Tremend- play at the next level. Player. But I mean, Caleb Caleb has like twenty more steals than the next guy. So it's like exactly. It's like and it, then it, I remember I wrote an article a couple weeks ago about you know making the case for McConnell and his. His case is just growing and growing. I mean, that's right another now, thing that would make me mad because I I would feel bad for you because you spent the time to write these articles. I'm pretty sure Brian wrote an article mm-hmm. too talking about Caleb. So it'd be like all that time and effort going into these articles, and it's like yeah, he doesn't get it. Would be would be kind of sad. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember I remember I was texting uh, my in laws a couple of days ago about it, about how you know I I, I kind of did the same kind of article for for Adam Corsack, and then and then Corsack didn't win you know anything for for the puncher stuff so yeah we'll see yeah i know yeah no, he's only had yeah he only had like a hundred straight punts with no touchbacks exactly but. i mean you know he literally met all the criteria and then <laughs> they were like nah now nah, we'll give it to the I, penn state guy I and mean, the penn state guy was good don't get me wrong but yeah i don't know but i mean i'm looking at it right real quick so i mean mcconnell still leads the big 10 and uh Oh no! Now he's second in defensive box score per minute, something like that. Whatever the analytic was, but yeah, he still leads in like steals and everything. So I mean, the way he, I, I guess, I guess we could talk about Caleb in terms of you know his his defense. You know, going back to the Wisconsin game, especially you know his defense on Giant Davis yeah. was was absolutely phenomenal. You have to take into effect and count too. He basically defends all the best players. Sure. Like he basically, whether Pykele puts it on him or he puts it on himself, mm. he's facing the best. He's defending the best players, whether it's whether it's Johnny Davis, whether he saw him last night was guarding at some point straight Jackson Davis. He's guarding professional level guys, and he's pretty much like I don't want to like he's pretty much shutting him down. I mean, he's yeah. doing yeah. doing tremendous job, Johnny Davis. You could I mean, you saw even the last game Wisconsin came away with the win, but I mean, he really. He really defended Johnny Davis really well, and that dude is that dude's gonna probably win Big Ten yeah. Player of the Year. Yeah, one and of the best just, quotes from 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 Davis after the game were basically he was so happy to see Caleb McConnell come out of the game. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. So yeah, the, exactly. You have to take that into account is that he t- defends the best players like every game. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, it's I, not I, it's I, not yeah. it's not always about the stats, you know. I mean, he's you know best like you say guards. One through four, really, and you know does yeah. a does a f- phenomenal job. So, yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we're pretty much touched on everything. You want to talk um, about the uh, little uh, celebration from Ron there at the end with the? Oh yeah, 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 good, <laughs> yeah, yeah. good. All you, all you. Okay. Uh, well, I thought it was. I thought it was funny. I, I, I'll be honest. I was. He's done it a couple times this year, though, so I can't say that I'm that surprised. But mm-hmm. I said, but I said, like I said, uh, I'm kind of surprised knowing that how kind of. How kind of uh, I don't even know what the word to use, but I'm a little surprised they don't give technicals for that. But I don't think they should because I like I like watching these guys play with a lot of emotion. And after some after something like that, I mean, if you're doing that when it's like you know first half ten minutes into right, the game, right. like it's like what are you doing? It's like there's it, it's like why? But like after la- after that last night, I mean, you got the place, the I mean, the assembly hall going crazy. He hits one of the biggest shots of the year. Yeah, you deserve to do a little, uh, little dropping there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ron. I, I, Ron I, talked I, about it after the game, and he says, like, you know, he had to pick your moments, and he felt like that was, you know, that was a good time for it. Yeah, I, th- I mean, I like watching guys play with this emotion. Otherwise, you, it's like, a, it's like a, a little bit of baseball where it's yeah. like, you know, you don't see where it's like guys do one thing and then all hell breaks loose. But now. Yeah. We can't watch baseball, so I guess we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> I, I did, I did, I did like Harper's bow too. I thought, I thought yeah, that was good. And then he, you know, I mean, he won the ball. He he won the ball, and he and he came through. You know, no, you know, normally Geo Baker takes those shots, but obviously now now we can see that Ron's obviously capable of of, of doing that as well. Now we just got to get Richie to pull one of those, do one of those celebrations after <laughs> he hits a big three in his men's league. Yeah, there you go. 
The only problem is he has to actually hit a three. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, yeah, I mean, Rutgers right now, uh, you know, they're 75th in the net as of this morning. So, obviously, it dropped six spots, I think it was. They were 81 coming into the game. Um, so, I mean, a win, a win over Penn State on Sunday at home isn't really going to move the needle, you know, too much. But um, a, a loss – a loss would for the wrong reason. So yeah, to me, if they went, if to me, if they beat Penn state, I, I mean, if you want to be safe, yeah. Win one more in the big 10 tournament. If you want to sure. leave, no doubt, but honestly, the way they're playing, they're per, like, I think they're, they're, de- they're definitely get like, they're, they're shooing for the buy, right. They're at least getting the buy. Oh uh, yeah. They had, they're yeah, definitely they got the buy. Yeah. The double buy is still on the table. Double buy technically enough. is still on the table, I believe. Yeah. That's which is crazy. I mean, which to me, like, like a, a, lot of, a lot of things have to happen, but I believe, yeah. you know, as of like, like before yesterday, last time I looked, they, they had a shot for the fourth, but yeah, I it mean, comes down to the question. Would but... you, I think it comes down to, would you want the, like, would you want the double buy? Cause that's one less game. Uh, you'd be pro if you play, if you play the first game, like what they're scheduled now, mm-hmm. you're playing probably what well, you're probably end up playing the winner of Nebraska, Maryland, which right. probably will be Maryland. So and the Maryland has been Maryland has been rolling. That's a, yeah, they've seen a little bit of resurgence lately. That's a, yeah. So they're a little bit of a dangerous team right now. So that's why I'm saying like win Sunday and if if they lose like if they were to lose to Maryland, I don't like the Maryland's pretty good. So I don't I don't know if that would do if I don't know if that would keep them out. It it would give you some questions. But Maryland Maryland's a dangerous team right now. But um get but if you get to the double buy. And you play a better team, like I don't know, I can't even, I don't even know who they play. But if you end up playing a better right. team, like at the same time, how are you going to keep a team top four? Well, they they would be top four in the um, Big Ten. How are you keep even right. if they were to lose in that first game? How are you keeping how are you keeping the team that's top four in the Big Ten out of the tournament? I mean, as far like right now, it's even hard to hard for me to believe, although it's possible. But I mean, how are you keeping it? Rutgers is a top six team in the Big Ten, which the Big Ten, as we've seen this year. It's not it might not be as good as it was in the past, the last past years, but still still a good league. And I still think that if Rutgers, you know, if Rutgers is in the top six, if they just end, if they end where they are now, win Sunday, that's it. I think they should be in, but I think at least fine, at least last four in. I think that uh, to me that I think that's to me that's kind of uh kind of fair because they do have a very unusual resume, mm-hmm, but I think it's sure. good I think it's good enough to warn at least a spot in Dayton. And if, and if Rutgers wins in Dayton, then they've earned their way into the field of 64. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, that's my feelings on it. <laughs> yeah, no, I a hundred percent agree with you there. Um, you know, even Ron and Gio know they still have work to do. Um, they're taking it. They're taking it one game at a time. Um, they know that their kind of season has, has been up and down at times. Um, I'm actually glad you mentioned, uh, you know, what you, what you just said about, you know, playing into the field of 64. So right now, Brad, Brad Wachtel released his new new bracketology bracketology uh, you know st- uh, you know this morning, and uh, he has Rutgers as a 12th seed playing in the uh, playing in the playing in the playing game um, in the Midwest against Memphis. Uh, the mm-hmm. winner takes on UConn. So um, that's fair. I mean, when Memphis yeah. is a good team. So I mean, Memphis. I mean, or they weren't good early on, but they've been like they've gotten. I've seen they've gotten better with a. Uh, Ever since Penny Hardaway went off on the media, it seems like it seems like they've been playing better. So, yeah, I mean, Rutgers to me that to me that's fair. And if Rutgers wins against Memphis, then they've earned their way into the field of sixty four. And sure. if they lose, then then that's it. Yeah. <laughs> to me, that's to me that's to me that's fair. At least sure. right now, we'll yeah. see what happens. I mean, they win, but they win on Sunday, win a game in the Big Ten tournament. You can find your way, find your way, not having to play in the final in the first four. So nothing's nothing. I don't think anything's set in stone yet. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Show up, so everybody show up on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, like I said, man, I think I think that the fans will be there. Um, they'll give you know a lot of the guy, you know, the seniors, you know, also also Ralph Ag and uh, Luke Luke Nathan, you know, good good send off. Um, I know I know Gio went through senior day a lot last year, and and so did Luke. But um, yeah, they get another one. They get another celebration. And uh, yeah, so you know, Jersey Mike's Arena on on, on Sunday, twelve o'clock. Um, you know, full full TKR staff will be there basically. So uh, we'll have you covered from uh, you know before tip to after tip, and uh, you know we'll see we'll see what happens there. And uh, yeah, uh, Penn State I believe plays Illinois tonight on the road, so um, they get I guess one less day of rest compared to Rutgers. So I don't know what that means for for anything, but. 
I guess it, maybe it helps. Maybe that doesn't less time to prepare. So, but yeah, but yeah, uh, Penn State beat Rutgers last time at home or in in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, it wasn't a close game at all, actually. So, um, yeah, they you know they definitely had to get a win this time around in Piscataway, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So, uh, with that being said, uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, you know, I think we're close to, to nine thousand followers on the uh, on the Twitter there. So. There you go. Get us, yeah. get us to, get us to nine thousand, then get us to ten thousand, and then get us to a million. That will be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, all right, everybody, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you guys on Sunday as uh, Rutgers takes on Penn State. Thanks.